Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, we're live and we're on Facebook, Somerset Films Facebook page. Uh, over to you, Phil. Oh, and welcome. Welcome to our live stream tonight on the subject of Sound We See, which was a wonderful project that took place for us in Somerset in 2014 when filmmakers... Lisa and Paolo from the Echo Park Film Centre in Los Angeles came over and ran a residency with us here in Somerset at Somerset Film at the Engine Room in Bridgewater um, in which they made a wonderful film with, I think it was about 40 people involved, each of whom contributed to this film that basically told the story of 24 hours in the life of Somerset in 24 minutes. We're going to see that film tonight um, and we're going to also um, have an opportunity to talk to Paolo and Lisa about where the project came from and how it started. Echo Park Film Centre is a volunteer-run, non-profit, community arts organisation specialising in small format filmmaking, education, resources and supplies with a particular emphasis on working with Super 8 and 16 millimeter cameras and film. And they have a, a, a center, a workshop center and a cinema in the heart of Los Angeles. And we saw them immediately when we were first introduced to them as kindred spirits across the, across the pond, as they say, in terms of what they do. And they were introduced to us by one of our trustees, Andrew Buchanan, a much traveled the producer across the world, filmmaking and television making, and he knew Lisa and Paolo and he put them in touch with us. And, in, and the rest, in a sense, was history. So I'm going to, without going on for too long, immediately introduce you to Lisa and Paolo, who are waiting in the wings to tell you more about the Sound We See project, which incidentally has not only happened in Somerset, but has happened across the world. Uh, in different locations, and we're going to see some short examples of those films that have been made in other parts of the world, and then an opportunity to hear about the making of our film and see its film, see our film in its entirety. The whole thing is going to run for about an hour, and at the end, we're going to hear an update, an all important update from Lisa and Paolo, who join us now from Vancouver. Lisa, Paolo, are you there? Dun, da, da, da. Bum, 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 bum. We are here. We are here. But we are there. We're, we're all together in this global reality. So thanks for having us. So we're nice. everywhere. Yeah. So. yeah. so nice to reconnect. So it, it, maybe it's not obvious, but I'm Paolo Javanzo. And... <laughs> I'm Lisa Mar. Okay. Just to get that out of the way. Good. <laughs> and we're Always here in Vancouver. To... And yeah. Excited to see you. Always good for clarity. I'm not going to keep interrupting you. I'm going to ask you now to tell us about the background to Sound We See and perhaps introduce us to some of the examples of the films that have been made elsewhere in the world. We would love it. I'm going to have Lisa talk about the Sound We See, but at first I want to start off and just say, we love you. We are in Vancouver. We are based in Los Angeles, but we're in Somerset. We're in Bridgewater. These are heavy times for this world we live in. And our heart goes out to everyone. We'll get through this. But moments like this are so important that we celebrate art and culture and our, our commonality as opposed to our differences. So I'll leave it at that. But let's talk about the sound we see 
at least the way you think so. <laughs> yes, we are part of a human family and, and art brings us together. And it's nice to have this opportunity to think back on these times uh, where we were together in person and also how art has a way of, of living on and um, continuing to connect us uh, when we're apart, when times are a little bit more challenging. So we're going to talk a little bit about The Sound We See. It's a project that started 10 years ago in Los Angeles as part of our free filmmaking classes for local youth. We've always provided free classes for our local youth and our local elders. And this was a project that started when we decided to reimagine the city symphony genre, which was uh, a genre that began really in the 1920s when film was still very new and cities were dynamic places that artists were getting excited about um, representing on film. And so uh, we used that original framework, films like Berlin, Symphony of a Great City, Manhattan, which was shot in New York, and uh, Man with a Movie Camera that was shot in Soviet Russia, trying to reimagine those by young people in the 21st century. So we started with uh, Los Angeles. The framework um, was began then and still remains true over these 10 years. We're up to 19 symphonies now. Um, so, but the very first one was shot in the fall of 2010, 37 youth between the ages of 11 and 19. And each hour of the day became, became a minute on the final film. So the film starts at midnight, it ends the following midnight and uh, the youth chose different places around the city they wanted to imagine on film. And we'll get a chance, the beauty of this one hour together, we're going to get a chance, as Phil said, to sprinkle a little bit of the past seeds and watch this beautiful forest, this global cinematic forest that we've created and get to watch the Somerset film in its entirety. But, but that gives you a sense of place. Maybe we'll keep it at that for what the Sound We See project is, is like. Does that feel good on your end, everybody? It certainly does. And I, I want to introduce at this point my colleagues who are also going to be part of this um, whole thing and are already here with us. There's Richard behind the scenes. Rich, are you there? Can you pop up? Yep. On the Hello, there he I'm here. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> uh, that's Richard Tomlinson, our wizard, our tech, uh, creative technician, creative technologist rather. And we also have Deb Richardson with us. Uh, hey guys, I'm so looking forward to reminiscing with you. Fa <laughs> fabulous that you could be here tonight. Thank you so much. But that sounds spot on, uh, what you just said, um, Paolo, so let's go. We're going to look at a little bit of the L.A. sound we see, is I think that we'll, right? Yeah, we'll start with L.A. We have a, we've done 19, like we said, and we could fill the whole evening up, but we're going to keep to about five examples. So I think eventually you'll see some examples of the sound we see Los Angeles floating across your screen. So anytime there's the first one, there's a real emotional attachment. Let's listen to it for few seconds and we'll come back. It kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what the context is, I think. So here we go, we can just sort of reel on from it. Here it is. This is our city. Bum, ba, da, <laughs> this is the sound we see. Bum, ba, da, <laughs> da, 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 midnight. Our 90 seconds are almost up. We got, I think we got to move to the next city, but before we do... Well, I think we should watch this one because it does yeah. set a nice uh, tone. So, like we said, the youth themselves decided where they wanted to film. This was a location at a time that everybody wanted to be in on midnight, the first shot of the very first sound we see ever. And so we actually, for this one, see all the filmmakers. So it's a really beautiful representation. You see the people who are making the film and that's what these films are about. They're all handmade films created by community. It's not about, uh, you know, filmmakers coming in from outside and, and telling people what to film in their city. It's really inviting the people who live there, and in this case, the youth who live in Los Angeles to say, yeah, what's important about 
your city and, and how should we express that together. So uh, it was a dynamic night, a beautiful night, and just kind of sets the tone for the future projects. And if there's one scene in one movie of one minute of one country, that one still gives me goosebumps. Watching these kids take over a tunnel, we blocked the tunnel, cars were honking, police were chasing us, but we did it anyway. So let's <laughs> move on to the next country. Los Angeles, you can see that in its entirety on the website. Right. I think maybe we'll pull up Hanoi, and thanks again to Richard, you're being amazing, um, the video wizard behind the scene there making this happen. But I'm very and I will start my clock this time because I think we have the gift of gab. We like to tell stories that I'm going to give us about. Okay, anyway, let's. now we're in Hanoi. We may start in the beginning. We don't know where it starts. It's kind of fun. It's like video roulette. We don't knows? know. Yeah, exactly. And you can always yeah. check in online. They're all posted online in their entirety. But um, this was the second one. We went to Hanoi uh, to a place called Hanoi Doc Lab. So working with um, people that were slightly older, mainly in their 20s and early 30s, who were really exploring documentary film in new ways. This was their first opportunity to use analog film. So this is the first um, sound we see was shot on 16 millimeter. This one was shot on Super 8 and we created a lab there as well. So um, they all have soundtracks created by local musicians. And I just saw that Nick from Action Track is joining us online right now. Hey Nick, um, we'll get to your amazing contribution and the youth you worked with, um, with the Somerset Project. But it's so important and so moving that the moving images get paired up with sounds created by local musicians, poets, um, youth choirs, uh, instrumentalists using both traditional and uh, modern instrumentation. So we'll hear a little bit of traditional Vietnamese instrumentation here with this one. Yeah, so that's a good, we're gonna change our format. We're gonna speak a little bit and then let it play. So now let's do about 20 seconds of this, Richard, just with the sounds so you can hear the music. good it's you know it's once again you can see all of these in their entirety at the echo park film center website so please do um we encourage you to watch these but let's go to guwahati this is so much fun i feel like we're traveling the world <laughs> from the safety of our living room here um so now we're in guwahati india northernmost um eastern part of india near bhutan and um, nepal a beautiful transformative place we were there for a month and made worked with an art collective called lisa's gonna help me Desire Machine Collective. Desire Machine Collective. And this time we really started experimenting with using local ingredients. Um, you know, we were using Darjeeling tea, known in the region. It's, it's obviously a quite popular uh, format, I mean, uh, research you can find. And what made that unique also? Well, this was working with another organization and they're a Marxist uh, art collective who hadn't really had a chance to work with local youth. So that was the nice partnership here. It was kind of very um, contextual, conceptual artwork meeting the city symphony genre. Um, and the interesting thing about this part of India is it's very matriarchal. So we got to experience sort of the female gods. There's a river there that's considered to be a female a river, very powerful geographic presence there. And um, yeah, just the idea that India is truly a country that never sleeps. So even in the, the nighttime, uh, there was always activity. And this was all hand processed in buckets, uh, just using a little closet for um, our dark room. And when you talk about female gods, we see that Sue Palmer from Fro From and Froom is watching, and she's one of our favorite artists in the world. So talk about female goddesses. Anyway, let's watch 20 seconds of this one with sound. Guwahati oh, City yeah. Symphony is that it was created by a man who was a musician 
an architect and a psychic. So he actually didn't watch the film before composing the score. He just read everyone's auras, who was the filmmaker. And then he created the soundtrack. But everyone said, this is the perfect soundtrack. So uh, there's different ways of uh, uh, invigorating the creative process and we love them all. So, yeah. And I think maybe we'll just do one more. I think that's the way, because um, cause we're actually following the chron chron chronology of the way things were shot. So we'll end with Old Crow as far as the past, and then it'll be a good sequence to Somerset. So the last one, let's pull up Old Crow. Um, and nation's community, an indigenous community called the Vuntukwitchin in a very rural part of what is now Canada, what was originally indigenous and still is indigenous land. But it was a village of only 300 people. And in this, we had to take a plane to get there. There's no roads to get there. Either you have to take a river or fly to get to this community. And we worked with the elders using the, the language as the soundtrack to the film. Only about seven or eight people still speak um, the indigenous language, and they wanted to incorporate that into the soundtrack. So a transformative experience for us to work with this community um, in such a powerful thing. Maybe Lisa has a few words. I yeah. think let's just be quiet so that we can hear a little bit of the language. I think it's So yeah, it's very important to keep that language alive as it is for them to keep their cultural traditions alive. So we were there in the fall time. It was a time where people were hunting caribou. It's their traditional food source. Uh, preparing it for the winter, gathering wild cranberries. And we use wild cranberries in the process other natural ingredients there and basically in a town of 250 pretty much everybody in the town was involved with the making of this film either they were in the film or they were making the film or they were working on the music or they were part of the huge potluck dinner we had at the end where everyone brought food to share uh, inside the arctic circle uh, amazing aurora borealis and just a real honor to be invited into this community at this important time of the year to participate in these um, annual rituals and practices we're still in touch with them, hoping to return this summer uh, for future engagements and um, just so inspiring. 250 participants, that's an amazing number. And I thought we had a lot with that kind of, you know, 30 plus. That's astonishing. We had a lot, but not 250, <laughs> yeah. But I, sometimes I feel like with the Sound We See Somerset, we actually got to meet pretty much the entire county. It's the only county <laughs> symphony we've done. Yes. Uh, Old Crow was a village symphony. Los Angeles was a city symphony. But Somerset still stands as the only county symphony. That was fantastic. How much research, Lisa, do you do before before you go to a, to a place? Well, you know, we really rely on these partnerships. And that's what is so beautiful about these projects is that, you know, working with the engine room and Somerset Film, also having some friends there already, Jock Winterheart, Sue Palmer, um, artists that had been working with the community and had really been singing the praises of the creativity of this group of people and this area of, of uh, England. You know, it's all part of it. Some of it is research and some of it is, a lot of it is really trust and being open. Um, it's a delight to come to a place and learn from the people who live there rather than coming in with too many expectations. So um, you're the experts. It's your area of the world. It's your town. It's your city. So we really do most of our learning from you. And what we're sharing is maybe some uh, cinematic practices and ways of working together that we hope can be useful for communities moving forward, even after the project's wrapped up. Oh, I certainly remember standing in that room that first session where everyone was there and just everyone bathing in the love that you guys bring, mm -hmm. you know, to to this whole process, really. What 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 for you were kind of the overriding memories of, of, of the production process? You know, I think for us, Somerset will, will always hold a very special place in our heart. We lived, um, I think it was about a 40 minute bike ride outside of town on a alpaca farm and every morning waking up and hopping on our mountain bikes which you were the engine room was so kind to to lend us and riding into town so that initial every morning with the sun and the moisture and like it was transformative and so that i thank you will be in my heart forever and 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 just yeah the scale of it i think you know often we work in a city on a very micro level like in the first nations community you could walk from one end to town and 
five minutes and you've done the whole town, right? You know, when you're dealing with a county that is quite large, you know, and you're taking bicycle rides and trains and cars, just the level of the scale of production and the trust and the, the emphasis people would come pick us up at three in the morning on our little country road. And it was incredible. Those, those partnerships, those relationships, we spent the night at a lot of people's homes. They invited us in and fed us meals. It was just incredible. It really, really was. Yeah. yeah. I think just that hospitality and the warmth and, and, you know, just the way that people were showing us these places that they lived in so much history and, you know, spending the night in the Bakelite Museum with Patrick and Imogen and, and, you know, having breakfast on kind of a family farm with Stevie and Angie and their whole family. And, you know, just these moments of Palo Alto getting to know people very intimately in a very short amount of time and just feeling that hospitality and the humor and people really just yeah, opening their hearts, opening their homes, showing us these really beautiful um, places in the countryside. It's breathtaking. It was so organic too, wasn't it? Because I remember those, the, the big pieces of, uh, was it wallpaper or flip chart going up, going on the big cupboard doors and and people starting to populate it with, with where they wanted to go to. And it wasn't forced in any way. It was amazing. And yet we did you know, through this process, you covered so much and reflected so much of the county. For, For sure. sure. Yeah. It yeah. Was amazing. And just the watching people self-organize, as you say, like people coming around this idea of introducing some strangers into their community in such a generous and, as you said, very organic. Everyone just immediately clicked, you know, and people became friends and maybe they didn't know each other prior there it was quite diverse as far as age and geographic location and experience level and everyone just immediately became this family that took care of each other and definitely took care of us and we felt that our whole time there so i think we've got rich we've got a little bit of um, our colleague alistair at the time uh, made a, um, a making of and i think we can see a little bit of that certainly my um, the visual memories i have are of people coming so excitedly out of our disabled toilet which had been turned temporarily into um into a dark room and Paolo sitting outside with the timer and uh, and kind of the messages going to kind of through the door so um and and people being just so excited as they kind of you know because you didn't know what was going to be on this uh, on this footage and and hanging it up so carefully draping it in the studio one ready for it to dry to see what might actually uh, kind of appear on it it was, it was magical really wasn't it totally magical every every roll of film is magical and you never know in this case we used uh, i think mainly we were using tea uh, English tea, but we also delved into some uh, local cider for some of our processing. So the credits for sure were processed with that where the apple was being passed from person to person. But um, yeah, we, we were doing some heavy experimentation for this project. Yeah, I remember our trustee Andrew Buchanan turning up with the uh, the largest pack of cider I think I've ever seen uh, <laughs> produced out at, um, at Westbury Submendit with their community orchard and their uh, community side of apple press out, out there. Uh, yeah, and I seem to remember that um, uh, you guys did, did you get flu while you were with us? I could. We, yeah, we did a little bit just for a minute, but uh, <laughs> that was luckily before it kicked into heavy action. But yeah, you know, there's always a few challenges that you got to rise above, a few surprises. But yeah, well, I think I, I think that's credit to your your energy and um, and just you know, but you just kept going. I come, I, I I was amazed. I thought, oh, we're gonna have to postpone this for a fortnight. <laughs> They're both not well. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think it was the flu, Deb. I think I drank all that cider that. <laughs> Andrew brought in and I was out for a couple of days, but I think that's, that was the culprit, but we, we bounced back, we bounced back. I actually still have your um, recipe um, for for the Capitanol based um, process uh, on on uh, the office wall in, in the engine room, so uh, that, that has stayed there since. Nice. And I it's love this moment too that we're just seeing on screen now where everyone just got physical with, with the film, it was, it was a really magical moment. Lovely. Okay, good. So we are. The video is playing live. Okay, good. So I was. Thank you. I'm a little slow on the on the tip here. So we're talking over it. I love it. Okay, that's cool. Great. And I remember there was a bit of a call out to the community for cameras and projectors. Someone turned up with an amazing telecine machine that we used, yeah. which was incredible. 
And that's another thing that I love is, you know, kind of resurrecting some of this gear that maybe is sitting in an attic or a garage and gathering a little dust. And these are still viable machines. And it's exciting to see those working again and getting people excited about older technology and connecting a little bit with the past, even in um, these modern times. Okay. Oh, sorry, really fun for us too, as I'm looking at these images, getting reacquainted. We went in, we went back and looked at the, the, the film again and some of the, we do a blog, I think for your viewers that are excited about that, called Sell Your TV and Come to the Cinema. We've done it in every country and every sound we see in every part of the world. So if anyone, even the participants want to revisit that beautiful time after this episode, it's really quite lovely. But the, my point being, it was so nice that it was an intergenerational um, sound we see, which, you know, there was two, I think, father, there was a father-son team and a mother-son combination, which was, to us warms our heart when we see that. And I mean, some elders in the community participated. So it was really celebrated that county on all levels, all skill levels, all cultural levels, all interest levels. It was great. Well, I'm also, uh, I've also got the responsibility of watching the, watching the clock and, <laughs> and I failed already. So yes. um, I think it is, uh, it is now finally time. Uh, so would you be so kind, Lisa and Paolo, to introduce the film that we're about to see now? We are going to be taking a look at, revisiting five years later, the sound we see, a Somerset County Symphony made by about... 40 people, 40 citizens of all ages, and including an amazing youth choir uh, led by Nick from Action Track. That will be your soundtrack. And um, the film starts at midnight at the Bakelite Museum and it carries on through until we get to Chard, uh, a backyard party in Chard. And so, yes, let your mind drift. Come on this amazing journey, the sound we see through the entirety of Somerset County and uh, let's travel back in time together.
Farrington Gurney and Mr. Ilchester Watchett and Wells.
One more time. One more time. <laughs> that film holds up. That is that is just as great as the day it was shot. It's amazing. I love the fact that the chickens got a credit. <laughs> <laughs> got to. They're working hard, those ladies. I'll put myself in between you two, if that's okay. So cute. So, um, thank you so much, Lisa and Paolo. That was um, great to see again. And um, from everybody in Somerset, uh, uh, you know, thank you so much. Uh, what's the latest from Echo Park? What's happening right now? We'd be happy to talk about it. We, a year ago, Lisa's from Vancouver, and I'll let Lisa talk about her journey, but um, Vancouver, Canada. About a year ago, the city of Vancouver offered us a free facility in a park to occupy, to use for three years, to continue the activism, social justice work, media literacy, media empowerment we do in Los Angeles. So now we have a satellite or a second location in Vancouver, Canada, where we are um, sitting right now and talking to you. So okay. that's the kind of latest and greatest that we're year two of a three year engagement, which hopefully could and will hopefully be extended to six years, nine years, 12 years, depending every three years. It's revisited, so. I think you just said it all. I said it all. <laughs> you yeah. said it all. Well, and LA is as strong as ever. I mean, we are, as we alluded to in the beginning of the program, had to rethink um, how we do things to, for people's safety and public health and other things. So moments like this are so special to commune with people we love and hold dear, but to do it in a manner maybe that is untraditional because we obviously prefer being with our constituents, with our community face to face, but. We need to rise to the, to, to the occasion. So thank you once again for doing this. So I think there'll be a lot more of these opportunities. And um, But I pass it back to you all at the engine room. And, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, EPFC in LA is celebrating 20 years coming up. And, um, you know, EPFC North is just beginning. And the Sound We See project is celebrating 10 years. So it's a lot of milestones. But I think the point being that, yeah, just keep making community films for all the filmmakers out there and all the folks like the engine room, Somerset Film, that are providing these spaces. It's key to bringing us together and, and to celebrate work and to celebrate communities because we live in a state of flux. And even, you know, seeing some Somerset five years ago, maybe some of those places aren't active anymore or people have moved. So it's a way to keep ourselves together and celebrate our past and also celebrate our strength moving forward as, as a community globally and locally. Mm. So thank you again. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, yeah, it's interesting you talking about finding ways in which we might um, continue to work, to continue to engage. Uh, we're currently working, Somerset Film are currently working on a project uh, in Wellington, which is um, uh, at the bottom bit of Somerset, kind of uh, Taunton, but at the, the southern tip, really. And um, we are, um, again, working with Action Track, uh, who you know very well, Nick at Action Track. Um, and we had our first session a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, that kind of buzz and excitement that takes place when people suddenly get a camera in their hand, this time, not not um, Super 8 cameras, uh, digital cameras, but, you know, really excited to go out and uh, document the architecture of Wellington and the community of Wellington. And now, of course, we find ourselves in this really strange situation. Uh, uh, but actually, you know, uh, we've we've uh, we've got a, a, a WhatsApp group. We're able to continue communicating with um, our, our group of participants. And uh, we are looking at how we might continue the filmmaking pr process on schedule. So rather than saying, actually, we're not going to be able to do this project. We're saying we are going to be able to do this project and we're going to find our own special inventive way of doing it um, that might involve you here in the UK. Uh, we're allowed to, uh, <laughs> Boris Johnson has told us we're allowed to go for some exercise or to go out for some provisions so maybe we we document those journeys and we're going to you know explore how we might um look at the editing process but purely online so actually there are challenges but they're creative challenges and we're really looking forward to sort of working with what you know what we've got and making the best of what we've got really um and actually you know we're continuing this kind of online conversation next friday um, at 1.30 UK time, so you can tune in, um, we're going to be live streaming a film review programme. So we're really getting to grips with broadcasting, 
We've kind of been doing it anyway, but we're doing it much more now, broadcasting online uh, the work that we do. So, um, but a lot of that stuff in Wellington, a lot of that inspiration has come from the Echo Park Sound We See experience in Somerset. So thanks very much for that. Oh, <laughs> um, I might make myself a little bit smaller. We're, we're kind of running to the end of our programme. I don't know whether anybody else from the team, Deb or Phil, has got any uh, last few words that they want to want to say? Uh, well, just to say how lovely it was to see the film again, actually. I really mm. enjoyed it. Um, it's really interesting to come back to it after that time because I wasn't really that involved in it at the time. I was I was not available, but it it was um, I was aware of it going on, and it's and it was an obviously a really great project. But seeing the result now, it's really interesting. Lovely film. Mm. Thank you, and that's that's all really. But thank you to to everybody for joining us tonight. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you so much, uh, Lisa and Paula. I don't know why we haven't connected with you uh, in this way previously, but I'm so glad we've done it. Uh, and I would hope that we can continue to do this because in the same way as we've learned so much from you already, I think um, the work that you do at uh, Echo uh, Park in Los Angeles and Echo Park uh, North um, uh, we were just uh, swapping notes the other day, Andrew, one of our trustees mentioned about your senior in residence. I just think there's so much more that we can learn from you. So would love to keep the conversation going um, and to stay in touch. But thank you for all the love um, and experiences that you brought to us. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for your con continued inspiration. We learn a lot mm -hmm. from you too. And uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. Let's keep making movies. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.